Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, it's Irene, I hope you're all doing well. So I'm super excited for today's video because today's video is a tour of my sewing area, so my sewing studio, things I have, machines I use, how I organize them and all of my tools. I'm super excited, let's go! So let's start with my desk area. I have a pretty large desk that I got from Ikea. This was, I believe, 45 euros and the feet were like separately. Uh, I don't remember how much I paid for the, for the legs, honestly, but they're like... Uh, they can go higher and lower if I need it, so, but I keep it at the lowest because I'm not the tallest person in the world. And here's my sewing machine. This is a Brother CX70PE computer and I paid around 300 euros for it. I know that's not the cheapest beginner sewing machine, but I think this made a lot of sense for me. And it has a lot of stitches, most of which I don't use, but it also has a lot of like comfortable automatic features and stuff. I think for the price you get a lot of, um, you know, great things great features on it on it and I honestly recommend it if you can you know if you can afford it if you're sure that you're gonna be using it as much as I do then it's totally worth it um, so the next thing that I really like about my desk is this I believe this is called a pegboard from IKEA and I think it's really really useful first of all it helps me you know choose where everything goes it has these little hooks that you know everything here can move when I want them to and here too this can move um, so the most useful part of it is that I have many scissors and I have them at, at you know at reach really easily so I have my embroidery scissors paper scissors loop turners um, normal scissors thinking shears I have a ruler and some bobbins a uh, tape in order to tape you know PDF sewing patterns and stuff and I have also some earplugs that I use when my machine is sort of uh, loud and you know I get overwhelmed especially with the overlocker um, and I also have this thing uh, where I can put like um, usually the most important function of this is putting instructions when I'm sewing I place instructions here so it's right in front of my face but it's not taking any space on my desk and it's really really useful for that I also put my you know new, new this is my new sewing pattern which I like the illustration of and I put it here as a decoration um, I also have my sewing journal behind here and that's very useful when I want to take notes as I'm sewing or when I learn something new and I want to keep that there I have a calendar behind here which was a gift from my friend Lara and it's very pretty and another thing that I have is my potato lamp <laughs> it's called potato potato I got it from Urban Outfitters and I really love it it's out of uh, battery currently but normally when I turn it on and if I hit it like this it like turns on and off and it changes like uh, three degrees of brightness I also have this cute pink cushion that I really love, you know, that I love gingham. And I use this uh, as a way to keep my machine needles, my overlocker needles, and uh, large hand sewing needles that I use to uh, bring in the tails of my overlocker uh, stitches. And this is the only purpose of this pink cushion because, you know, sometimes I go from a thick fabric to a thin fabric, but the previous needle I use is still um, usable. So then I just place it here and I take it back again next time and I use it until it's lost all of its usable usability capacity. You know, it's not that uh, sharp anymore. So another thing that I really uh, think is very useful is, you know how pencil cases that are made for desks can be quite small so I use this um, plant pot that I got from Ikea which is quite large and here I keep my roller cutter, um, a ruler, this is a button cutter which is super cool, super useful, um, you just basically push it like this but you have to put like a, a cutting mat, mat under it. I have my unpicker which is purple unfortunately and I hate purple but that was the, um, the best one. Um, and a gauge seam or yeah this is the gauge seam I think it's called and this I use a lot too. A pencil, a ch uh, chalk, um, chopstick in order to turn like um, you know, turn over some thin things like straps and stuff that I've sewn. I have these tools that I use to trace patterns or, you know, um, mark my sewing pattern pieces. So this is the use of that. I have my 
magnetic pin holder. I have different sizes of pins here. These aren't all the pins that I have, but these are the ones I'm currently using. And when I, like when they're not usable anymore, I put them in a jar and I put new ones here. I have like refills in another place. And um, I have my favorite tape, uh, measuring tape which has a bear and even you push his nose it comes up like that and I, I believe I've already talked about this one I really love it it's really cute but also because um, I used to have one that was just you know a traditional tape and my bird Lilo loves chewing this and he completely destroyed it so I have this now and so he can't get his beak on it so talking about uh, pets and pet proofing my sewing area you'll probably ask me what this is I have Two bunnies that love to chew cables um, so this is something again that I got from Ikea to protect my sewing machine cables I have this on like all of the cables in the house basically that they can reach computer cables and lamps and things like that this is a lifesaver so here I have my sewing box I think I got this from Etsy and I use this for you know little small items that I reach for quite often in here I keep my hand sewing needles and some extra machine and overlocker needles in different sizes um, and down here I keep a lot of my machine uh, presser feet I have uh, quite a large uh, amount of uh, um, presser feet because I really like to use different ones I think they make it so much easier and sometimes give better results than if I just use um, for example this is a bias tape uh, placement thing and I think that it gives a better result than if I did it with just a normal foot um, I use little coins to be able to open certain parts of my machine and change um, the needle or clean inside it and also I keep my thimble in here I use this when I'm hand sewing it helps me be faster and like it protects my fingers as well um, and here I keep these little clips which a lot of people seem to love but I really don't like them so much I feel like they move a lot and they don't really do their job well at least that's <laughs> how it was for me um, this is another foot. This is a walking foot and uh, it has all... It's a pretty complicated thing so it has a whole box for itself and and it has another compartment under here so I have a hemming web type thing. I've never used this before but I will I think for a skirt and things like that or like a hem of a blazer things like that could be perfect for this and I have some extra pins in various sizes uh, small ones, long ones and you know a mixture of the two I have safety pins here in this nice blue shade I don't really use these much but I think it's important to have them in case I need it I also have uh, more needles that don't fit in here have some extra blades for my cutter and some textile glue this what I this is what I use when I made a buttonhole and it's a frame fabric and I put some uh, of this before I cut open the or after I cut open the uh, buttonhole and I have some you know what are these called these are called I believe snap fasteners yeah it's snaps um, that I use for the bottom of shirts so like the, instead of making um, buttons all the way I make snaps in the end so that when I tuck it in it doesn't have a bulky button there this is what I learned to do from sewing patterns uh, from the 50s and stuff that's what they did back then and I think that was pretty smart um, and I have this um, sort of an interfacing but really thin it's not a bias tape type thing it, as you can see it doesn't really um, stretch well but I use this for for example if I have a thin fabric and I'm adding a zipper on it I, I, I will add this I will you know attach this uh, on the seam allowance and it's going to keep the silhouette pretty smooth and this zipper is gonna sit nicely and lastly I have various sizes of these things that are you know helpful to create bias tape so you pull uh, your bias tape pieces that you cut through here and then you press with an iron and it comes out as a folded bias tape and I have like various sizes depending on what I need and so yeah this is what I use this box for so in this corner I have first of all my dress form Beth um, 
I use this quite a lot. I love using that to help me sort of visualize how it's gonna be going and sometimes if I don't understand exactly where pieces are gonna go, I'll pin it here or if, I, if I'm making certain adjustments, it helps me, you know, um, for example, if I'm hemming, it's keeping the hem pretty nice and straight. Um, but it's not an expensive one at all. Uh, first of all, it was really hard to find one on my size. I am at bust 32, waist 23, and uh, I believe hips 35 inches. But these are inches, and I know my <laughs> measurement is mainly in centimeters, so I might be wrong. But this is like approximately how uh, my body is formed, and um, dress forms usually come. <laughs> like in bigger sizes and this one I just got for 38 euros on Etsy and it's not like the highest quality one or anything but it does the job I'm perfectly satisfied with it and I like to also even if I'm not using it for a particular purpose I like to you know uh, put um, something that I've been sewing or like that I've finished sewing to have a little decoration in the room and here on the floor I have a basket which hold some random things that don't really have a place or that I, you know, need access to quickly. For example, the foot, uh, put, uh, put, for example, the foot of my overlocker and some tracing paper, some um, scrap fabrics and fabrics that I use, uh, that I lay on my ironing board when I'm pressing some interfacing so that my ironing board and my iron stay clean. Here I have my Overlocker, which is a Brother 10340X lock. Um, I don't really like using an overlocker to be honest. It's very frustrating. I've had a lot of problems. It, it, it was a learning curve, definitely. Um, but it might just be me. I just don't have the patience sometimes to, you know, set it up perfectly. And so lately, I've been finding myself using more um, overlocker-free seams, like French seams or like false French seams, things like that. Um, but sometimes it does come in handy, uh, so it's really for me uh, essential and I use it quite often. And here I keep my cutting mats and this huge ruler that I use quite often as well. And here is my iron. I used to have a smaller iron, but this was gifted to me by the grandmother of my boyfriend. And it's a steam iron, so it's very, very useful for me, and um, especially when I'm ironing a whole fabric that is like three meters long. I used to have a mini iron, it would take me like hours. It was a torture, but now it's way easier and it doesn't leak too much either. So that's great. And my ironing board is a pretty large one. It is from Ikea and uh, I've been planning to change this cover because I think it's very ugly, but I haven't had the time to go and pick up another one yet. This is my ironing area and it's very useful because I have many plugs right there um, behind this furniture and I can use it for my overlocker, my sewing machine, my phone charger, the iron and everything that I might need it for. Um, I also have my pressing hem here which is a very essential part of my sewing area because I use it all the time. It makes it very easy to reach certain areas when I'm trying to press like curvy areas and it also makes my darts 10 times more beautiful. Um, and these are some sewing patterns that I've been ironing this morning because they were very very creased and I will be transferring them into another paper to not use directly this vintage one. Um, and as I was saying, here is my overlocker and under this I keep my sewing patterns. The first drawer here is where I keep all of my summer sewing patterns. As you can see, there are so many um, different ones. I have quite a large <laughs> collection of these. Um, these are actually vintage ones and then I also have some like reproduction ones that are photocopies and stuff. So that's great. They fit perfectly. And, and down here I have the winter and autumn ones. So long sleeves or you know one third of a sleeve, the three third sleeves and coats and certain other sewing patterns. Um, yeah, this is where I keep them. I have a lot. Um, maybe one day I'll make a video particularly for these, but so yeah. 
So this was the tour of my sewing area guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you got some inspirations from it. And if you did, please remember to give it a like, comment down below and click the subscribe button and the notification bell to know when I post new videos. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye!